laboratory scientist. He's also based at the uh, Kintampo Center for Health Research. And then also I have a virologist, Dr. Michael Owusu, also with the KNUST. And the Kumase Center for, I think it's Cellular Research, huh? KCCR. Right, we'll be looking at the situation currently. Last I checked, Ghana has uh, about 18 or 19 active cases. Like, seriously? Cumulatively, we've had about 171,000 cases. Sadly, we've lost about uh, 1,400 and something plus Ghanaians. And over about 160,000 uh, plus recoveries and discharges. So my guest in the studio, Seth Ajiman. On Zoom, I have Dr. Dennis Edujc and Dr. Uh, Michael Owusu. Uh, Seth, Afishapa. <laughs> right, great to have you. I yanked him in from uh, driving in from Winneban. I said, Seth, I forgot <laughs> to add you to this discussion, but it's great to see you, my brother. Yeah, it's great to right, see thanks you. for joining us. On Zoom, I have uh, Dennis. I see you in uh, hey, blue and white <laughs> Batakari. Is that Olympics, Agosu? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll do uh, Maybe it's Kentampura. Kintampurua. <laughs> right. Uh, Dennis Edujemfi, uh, consultant uh, immunologist. Tell me if I get anything wrong. He's also with the Kintampo Center for, is it medical research? Let me get it right. Yeah? The Health Research Center. That is one of the three health researchers for the Ghana Health Service. Right. And he's also uh, a fellow of the West African uh, College and the PRO of the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists. And uh, Michael, are you on board as well? Dr. Michael Ousu is a virologist with the KNUST and also the Kumase Center. Is it for cellular Co research? Co collaborative research. Collaborative research. And Afishapa to you on Zoom, huh? Virtual, virtual, yeah. Yeah, good, yeah, good afternoon to you. Afishapa to all my colleagues yeah. in your studio. Right. It's been a beautiful year now. Right. Uh, Great stuff. Best. I thought it important and relevant uh, to, 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 to update ourselves, give ourselves a sit rep on the situation with uh, COVID-19, uh, or COVID, as most people will say, uh, we've, we've done away with masks. I don't think we're washing our hands as we used to. Uh, all the protocols, uh, social distances and all, distancing and all that seems to have gone uh, astray, if I can say, right? Adherence is something we need to talk about. We're hearing also of the emergence of a new strain, I think it is it XBB or IBB? XBB. XBB. A <laughs> variant. Right. A variant of the Omicron. Okay. And then, of course, we've seen a review of our port Pro entry protocols at the airport and other ports of entry. Uh, Seth, let me ask you, um, what, how do you view our current situation? Okay, 18 active cases. I look at the dashboard of the Ghana Health Service. I still see we have the bulk of the cases in Accra mm -hmm. and Ashanti, or Greater Accra and Ashanti. Those were the focal points where we had the short-term lockdown, right? But I tend to think that the, the numbers in these regions or these locations reflect the numbers of testing facilities we have. Am I right? Yes, you are, you are very right. Um, let me say... Um, good afternoon to also my senior colleagues on Zoom. Um, I mean, from beginning of this outbreak, everything has been centered on Greater Kumasi, Greater Accra. Okay. To be frank, this outbreak made me know that we also have Greater Kumasi. Right. You know, so it's not surprising that even as of now, we still have um, this disparity of, of data presentation. Okay. Um, this is also probably due to the population and also due to the existence of um, a lot of labs in these two regions. If okay. you come to Greater Accra, we have a lot of labs. Kumasi has a lot of labs. That's where the huge populations are. Okay. Um, other regions, unfortunately, um, I mean, you go to some other regions, few regional capitals, if you see anyone wearing masks, even those days, mm -hmm. then the person just traveled into that region or probably a person is a visitor. So it is not surprising that we are still having most of our cases from these two okay. um, 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 regions of the country. Right. So have we done the right things? Our numbers are down. When I look at our, our, our sites, again, I find that we had some spikes uh, uh, 
last year, yeah, December, December. Bit, around the mid-year, June, July, and so on. But generally, we have been uh, low in terms of uh, uh, active cases, right? Yes. Uh, low in terms of critical cases, low in terms of recent deaths, and low in terms of uh, serious cases. Yeah. Have we done the right things? Um, I think in, in, in with a big picture, Ghana has done well. Okay. I mean, from the beginning of the restrictions, even to um, the border testing where the the main entry point, which is the airport, right. um, where we initiated testing. Let me take this opportunity to thank all those gallant scientists who, who volunteered their lives, their time, mm -hmm. their everything to help with the testing there. I'm very proud to say that I was part of you that part team of that, yeah. mm -hmm. um, that set up that lab and ran that place to to recent times where we had to relay the the restrictions. Um, I think Ghana has done well by and large. Okay. I mean, we might not have 100%, but let me say congratulations to the public health team led by Dr. Um, um, S. Right. Yes, I mean, and all his team, the Director General, and I mean, this COVID, I sometimes I look at COVID as COVID has some lab coats, some mm. white lab coats mm. on black dress. Okay. You know, they were very good reasons why probably COVID came, and we have learned some, We've some learned lessons, some stuff. Okay. and um, it has shaped our our public health system, especially as a lab scientist. I mean, before COVID, only few people could do molecular testing. If you say molecular testing, oh, go to Noguchi or right. go to KCCR or so Dr. Jesse's place. Capacity expanded and capacity. Expanded right. capacity now you, is everywhere, you know. Okay. So I think we've done well. Right. I, I won't say 100%, but we've done we've done a bit, okay. a bit good. Great stuff. If you just joined us, this is our first program for the year of 2023, Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM. With me, Norte, by nature. We're taking a review of the current local and global COVID-19 situation. Mm -hmm. The uh, health ministry, uh, alongside the Ghana Health Service, has introduced a review of our mm -hmm. entry protocols into Ghana. But you agree with me that over the Xmas also, we exercised or we employed this uh, visa on entry to allow people to come in and uh, visit our country, mm -hmm. uh, open up the economy to the potentials of the tourism and uh, creative arts industry, right? Mm -hmm. We are aware there's a current ongoing situation in China. Uh, the UK is also seeing an upsurge of cases. Mm -hmm. And I believe in some parts of the U.S. as well, yes, yes. we are witnessing these uh, new developments. So this makes this uh, review very, very, very relevant. Uh, I have in the studio uh, biomedical chief, biomedical, uh, or is it deputy chief? <laughs> Right. Yeah. Set, set Ajiman. Set in the studio. <laughs> and um, also on the line, I have an immunologist and a virologist. Uh, do I still have them on Zoom, Abeku? I see that my session is closed on my screen. Uh, I still have them. Yep. So uh, let me start with you, Dr. Michael Osu, if you can hear me. Can you hear yes, me? Um, I can hear you. Right. So any uh, quick comments on our current situation? I, 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 I went through the numbers. Uh, 171,065 uh, confirmed cases ever since our first case. We have 1,461 deaths. And we have 169,586 uh, 169, recoveries and discharges. Uh, three new cases I see currently and 18 active cases. Uh, just your quick comments on our current uh, situation. Yeah, so I, I, I look at the dashboard uh, since uh, throughout the week, uh, checking the numbers that are coming in. But for me, uh, these numbers are not surprising. The okay. This is expected. And uh, since um, somewhere August uh, to December, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those who are still testing the routine cases will tell you that occasionally you do get some cases. Uh, right. One, two, or three, or four cases that may come in. Uh, our lab here also, you do have some three or four cases that may come in uh, as part of the bulk cases of people who are having respiratory viruses. So okay. these numbers uh, are to be expected. And I don't think that they raise any alarm that um, should warrant any much worry. But but it's good to look at the, the global picture like you are mentioning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ghana has 
gone through about six waves of 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 these uh, COVID since uh, March 2020. That that uh, the virus came in. Okay. The first one in 2020 was was in June, where we had a peak number of cases. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in 2021, in the month of December, January, we had another peak case. And then 2021, again in, in June, you had a, a number of peak cases. And somewhere December to January 2022, mm -hmm. um, December 2021 to January 2022, we also had another spike, uh, which was quite uh, a number, significant. This went down. In 2022, June, we had another spike. And now we begin to record some few cases. So this trend of the virus is something that we are very much used to. And uh, okay. going forward, I don't think that this will change any much. Uh, you don't expect, you don't, virus you don't this. envisage or project that there will be any significant changes from the, the, the pr profile we have now as a country. Uh, yes, I mean this, this is a virus that always responds to, um, I mean, I mean, I mean various, uh, I mean, I mean population parameters. So okay. rising up and going down mm -hmm. is something that that comes with it, and this goes along with the variants that come. Okay. You know, the first wave we had the alpha, we had the beta, we had the 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 delta, the delta mm -hmm. and then we had the omicron. So right. every every variant comes with its own wave. Okay, uh, and this is the the pattern that we are seeing. I mean, uh, just to maybe, uh, if if you 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 permit, maybe just take you back to the basis a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, when this COVID started, and uh, um, we, we already mentioned that this virus is one of the virus that has the largest uh, I mean, strand. It's about thirty thousand blocks of 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 uh, base pairs, or which which is arranged. Okay. And at any point in time, some of the blocks remove and are replaced by others. Any time the virus replaces itself, it, it tries to do this in order to get some edge mm -hmm. over the population and to enable it to infect. Okay. And this is why it has gone through the alpha, beta, gamma, and omicron. So what is happening is it's the same omicron that is infecting various populations as we speak, but then the omicron is having uh, um, like offshoots. Right what we call sub variants so you have different variants coming in and uh, the last time i checked within our data in ghana mm -hmm. uh, we since july to december 2022 we have about 1758 omicron uh, I mean, I mean, genes which are deposited out of 4300 viruses so far in the gene bank okay and the predominant one is the sub variant which is ba 5.2 <laughs> Okay. Uh, followed by the B five, uh, but the ones that we are seeing now um, in China, in the UK, in the US, in Japan, Joy, Canada, Korea, is another variant which is the XBB one point five, which is what we are talking about. Then we have the BF seven, mm -hmm. and then the BQ one. So I mean, so far uh, the records deposits for those deposits in the gene bank, what we have sequenced so far does not show that we have these new ones yet okay in ghana so we have not yet recorded this but but it's not surprising it's also about capacity it's about how many you are able to sequence so okay i will not be surprised that we already have these in the system already it is possible but, that we may have them but we are yet to sequence them yes I mean, we may have them but yet to sequence them but but whether this will result in any wave is what i also don't think it will because okay. It is the same family of viruses which we are used to causing sore throat fever, mild headache. Right. And therefore, if you people may experience some mild uh, illness, but this is likely to recover quickly. So, right. Uh, looking at what this is and what others are experiencing, I I don't think that. Yes, it's good to be cautious. Mm -hmm. It's good to put in measures uh, so that you'll be able to decrease the impact in terms of number of people that will be infected. But right. I don't think it is going to be any different story that we have seen. Uh, okay. It's likely to be something that uh, we, we can manage going forward. Okay. We just heard Dr. Uh, Michael Osu speaking there re in, in relation to the developments and our current COVID-19 situation. He says what we're seeing, the changes we've seen since uh, March 2020, are normal uh, within the sequence or the, the, the course of life of a virus once identified. Um, he also projects that we, were not, we are not likely to experience any significant upsurge on account of the new variants that have emerged in other parts of the world. 
uh, he suggests to us that we, it is likely or possible uh, that we may have some of them, but we are yet to sequence them, and our current gene bank does not suggest that we have seen them yet. Right? If you have any questions on the current global and local COVID-19 situation, new measures at the airport, and perhaps maybe the need for renewed vigilance on our parts mm -hmm. as citizens, uh, you can WhatsApp us 55 997 uh, shortly, I will activate the phone lines uh, so that you can talk to us. Uh, we are live on Facebook and YouTube, I believe, and um, you can join us. All right. So let me come to you, Dr. Dennis Edujesi. Uh, today, I didn't make you Edujesi, so <laughs> there's no variant of your name. But let me ask you, I mean, hey, uh, somewhere in the fray and in our experience and exposure as a country to COVID-19, we got access to uh, vaccines. Currently, as I speak, uh, I see that we have done over 21 million and 400 plus, uh, uh, should I say, complete vaccinations, if I'm right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if that figure represents full vaccinations. But we've done about 21 million uh, vaccinations. Does that also account for our situation and our current profile and experience? Thank you very much, Mate. So, uh, as you rightly said, if you look at the picture of uh, vaccines, mm -hmm. the, the figure you actually gave represents the number of doses. Doses, right. Given out. Okay. So this one combines the, the, the two doses. Right. Those who might have taken boosters as well. Okay. Those who took only single doses. So the number of doses that have been given out so far. That's right. As per the table so is the 21 million. Right. So if you want to Let me just correct that properly. Let me just correct that. 21, I see on my screen, 21 million 400 uh, and, and 539 vaccine uh, so doses. doses. All right. Well corrected. Uh, well noted. So out, out of this, you get those who take only first doses. Okay. Those who have taken the two doses and those who might have done the booster doses as well. Okay. So... Uh, I took my time to look at it in a way that if we are estimating how many of our target population or mm -hmm. even the total population, mm -hmm. and then uh, the total population starts around 30 million. So if you want to estimate that, then you are looking at somewhere around 28.9%. That might have been fully vaccinated. Okay. But the question is, what vaccine are we talking about? And what is the longevity or the lifespan of protection from these vaccines? Right. If you review the vaccines that are available, being it the Moderna, being it the Pfizer, the Janssen, the AstraZeneca, or mm -hmm. the Novavax, or the Sputnik V, all the vaccines you can talk of, over mm -hmm. 20 or so of vaccines that are for COVID, most of them are having uh, longevity of like just six months as the data reveals. Okay. So if you look at it that way, then it means that many of us who probably may be walking around thinking we are fully vaccinated mm -hmm. might have had protection that are waning out of the system. Our protection... We can say that... And our, yes, our protection and our immunization or uh, immunity, that's the word I'm looking it, for. Immunity, if I want to put it that way. Will wane over time. Yeah. And you're suggesting Both to my listeners... That yeah. if you took your vaccine or your full shot or your full coverage about six months ago, your yeah, protection would have decreased or diminished. That, that's what the data suggests. Okay. In fact, in the case of AstraZeneca, if you had taken your second dose, which is a complete vaccination, mm -hmm. the data available suggests that you might be reducing the immunity right from the 90 days after the second dose that was taken. Okay. So that means we are dealing with just about three months, okay. nothing more than four months. Right. So let me ask you, Dr. Edu JC, having said that, and then looking at the reportage or the, the mode of reporting uh, cumulative doses of vaccines, um, from what you're telling us, does it give us the right picture? Uh, is, so it not, that, is it not? That, that won't give us the yeah, right. Can I can I just finish, please, please, so that my listeners can follow both of us. Uh, we are reporting cumulative doses given, right? 
which stands as over 21 million of a population. I think the last I ch checked, I saw we are 31 or 33 million, mm -hmm. right? I stand to correction. I will check. Uh, so I'm just asking, uh, what should we be understanding as a nation, as citizens, uh, to properly put us in position to uh, adhere to anything else that might come out from the authorities? All right. So, so what what that directs is that if you look at it that way, mm -hmm. I, I will be very surprised if we are doing anything more than twenty percent of our complete vaccination, being it six months or four months okay. of immune protection. Okay. And that is where the worry comes in. Mm -hmm. Looking at the description Doctor Owusu had given, anytime we have this global wave. Sure. It virtually reflects in the way that we tend to also uh, experience. Okay. And one of the problems China currently is having is that they, they had a very low uh, vaccination record. People were not uptaking the vaccines that were introduced. Okay. And when they had this uh, experience and exposure, coupled with the fact that they had a long or prolonged lockdown, people were just within their own closet. And in that case, you are not exposed to several other pathogens or microbes that would have improved your immunity. Right. When they got this breakdown, a lot of them are going down together with all the complications they might be having. And for me, that is where I have a worry. That's where your if what, concern for is. For less immunity within the population, right. then we might not be so worried about with any other way. Okay. Because our vaccine uh, dosing and protection in Ghana seems to be on the lower side. And for me, we need to rip it up. We need to look so at that it. if there's okay. any way we think that we might be protected. Okay. 21 minutes past year of two on Joy 99.7 FM. This is our first program of uh, Ultimate Health in the New Year. We're reviewing the global and local COVID-19 situation with the experts. You just had speaking Dr. Dennis Edujenfi. He's uh, Edu Jesse. You see, there I go. After correcting myself and being proud of it, right? Uh, he's uh, in Kintampo. Uh, he's a consultant immunologist and also... Uh, uh, a top, top, top grade biomedical scientist, of course. Um, alongside him, we have Dr. Michael Owusu with the KNUST, right? I, in my time, will say tech, right? KNUST, <laughs> it's a variant <laughs> of tech, right? But uh, he's a virologist. Dr. Owusu, this immunology, virology, and all that, uh, you express uh, a positive outlook and do not envisage any major, uh, should I say, turbulence or change in our profile. Now, when I went into the, uh, should I say, protection we have acquired on account of vaccines that uh, uh, our country uh, now has and has uh, administered, uh, the immunologists suggest that, well, we need to look at it and break it down properly in the sense that, well, our uh, protection may have waned and is expected to wane over time, and there's clinical evidence to suggest this. Um, is there anything you want to say in response or in relation to that before we move on to other aspects of our COVID-19 situation? Yeah, 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 I think that the key message for, for us now as a country is to encourage people to vaccinate. And vaccination is a sure way of of dealing with this uh, variants coming in okay. and uh, upsetting. So, and, and for me, booster doses, uh, uh, I mean, is a sure way to go. So, I mean, like he rightly said, if you have taken two doses, which is full dose, mm -hmm. uh, within six to nine months, you will expect that uh, the level of immunity you will have may, may not be as, as, as when you took it. So, okay. If you can go for a third booster dose, it's equally good. So, okay. I mean, the, the, the key to solving this is to let people go for as many boosters as possible. Those who have been vaccinated should vaccinate. Right. To give you some heads up. A uh, renewed if you, if you... and potent uh, vaccination campaign. Uh, right. Exactly. Because, I mean, like, I'm sure you are here to come to it. They spot, I mean, uh, measures yeah. in terms of limiting people coming in is good. I mean, from at one level, mm -hmm. but you realize that you can't stop a variant from coming to your country. It, right. It it, it it never works. No matter what you do, any variant that appears in, in especially it will highly ultimately populated countries, eventually like gets to your country. It will get to your country. Right. So, so how the question is, what do you have to do? Is mm -hmm. to boost your system by enabling people to 
get more vaccinated so that in case okay. you have it, you can manage the impact, uh, reduce deaths and severe disease and okay. get your population growing. Right. I like the fact that we are re reviewing all this in a very calm mode. We're not in any crisis mode. Eh? Mm -hmm. Charlie, God has been good. Eh? <laughs> when we started this uh, COVID business, you know, some of our programs were very frantic. Uh, you know, the phone lines were choked. People wanted to know. People were frightened. I'm wondering, uh, uh, Abe, do put up my WhatsApp screen shortly. Eh? But uh, WhatsApp is 055 uh, We're live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Right. And uh, uh, we'll be taking calls shortly. I will activate the phone lines. We're reviewing our uh, local and, of course, the global COVID-19 situation. We're considering uh, new variants. We're considering, I'm hearing now that, hey, the symptoms have changed. And now it's not about temperature. And uh, even when you take a swab, uh, depending on where the swab is taken, uh, the, the virus is hiding deeper now and so many other things. I'm sure you'll share with us, Sam. Eh? Uh, but I have the experts online and uh, they are sharing uh, with us. So um, this one says, uh, Pastor Alfred Notedua, Yesu. Uh, <laughs> I receive it. My question is with the reports and what we are hearing and seeing, are we looking at what happened in 2020 to reflect back again? And for we, the citizens, is our, our, our efforts enough? And are we ready as a country? This is from Douglas in... Uh, uh, DC, he's asking questions. Uh, we've ad addressed that. Uh, yeah, the, the experts do, do not suggest any panic, no. but we are uh, informing ourselves. This is an informed recovery mode. Okay, uh, In the past, we're in a, re a response mode. We're doing what we thought would help. So now we are more informed. Let me just see if I can uh, look at a, bit, a few more of the messages. Uh, if you've just joined us, we're talking about the COVID-19 situation. Uh, Today, I'm celebrating my dear sister. I don't think it's for me. All right. Uh, good afternoon, Norte. Welcome to my home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are always welcome, and we're glad to have you on board. Uh, this one says, we made it by grace. Indeed. Okie dokie. This is about the new year. All right. Let's talk about COVID. Uh, I will activate the phone lines. You can get in on 302 So definitely we need to vaccinate. Now, the call for va vaccination over Christmas seemed to be targeted and specific. Uh, I'll correct myself shortly, um, and uh, my, my guests can also correct that. I thought um, we're looking for those who had not been vaccinated. Um, uh, Seth, was that the case? Yes, I mean... Um I think that the the focus was to those who are not vaccinated. But just as um, Dr. Jesse said, right. the call was also for people to take what people call boosters. Boosters. You know, um, in the news you hear it mean booster somebody has. So this this right. word became very popular when this vaccine came. As okay. Dr. Jesse said, in about six to eight months, you might have lost your um, immunity as a result of vaccination. Okay. But I think we are still seeing low numbers because the acquired the natural acquired immunity mm -hmm. that is developed is also enhanced with repeated maybe infection so okay. um even as we are vaccinated and we get exposed to the to the virus then our immune system becomes more equipped to produce more soldiers right. so it's not really so dangerous that if you vaccinated six months ago mm. then you've lost all immunity probably right. you might have been exposed to the virus and your body will naturally some also natural. build some immunity right but to be on the safer side for instance i suggest that every six months just go and take the vaccine because okay. the vaccines are still available They're available currently people are doing home to home vaccinations so right I, I can mention at the backup polyclinic every morning you see them picking their eyes and they They're are going, going out home, to home yeah home to door home to door. street door to door you know so i think the vaccines have been available okay except that the numbers are a bit um um, um deceptive as right. um, Dr. explained maybe right. we need to know how many people have how, received right. two shots how okay. many have received just one okay then we can be we okay great stuff uh today i'm celebrating my dear sister rita ama kumi I'm celebrating her birthday. Okay, Rita, I'm Akumi. It's your birthday. I pray for God's blessings and protection. All right. I thought it was an old message because I think my uh, WhatsApp clock is showing 1039. Right? <laughs> All right. But therefore, but, but I'm seeing my name in there. All right. So send your WhatsApp 055 uh, Ultimate Health on Joy. 
99.7 FM. We are discussing and reviewing the global and local COVID-19 situation uh, in a very calm manner. We want to inform and indeed transform our behavior with yeah. regard to COVID-19. Schools, workplaces, churches, we are seeing the big, big, big gatherings. People <laughs> flocked and flooded into the country. It's yeah. good. It brings money. Uh, maybe it brought the dollar down as well. Yeah. Uh, but we need to be mindful of <laughs> these uh, trends. If you have any questions, concerns, my phone line is active 030 two two one six five four one my whatsapp is zero five five eleven eleven nine nine seven no variant i'm still naughty by nature Joy, right so so yeah you were gonna add something yes, i mean just just this afternoon um i heard that even china has reduced they think that the name should be changed from disease to infections you know all right that's why they've relaxed all their restrictions mm. especially for the quarantine restrictions okay. as of today and now no quarantine for travelers who are entering in the country so okay. it means that this virus is just going to be with us just as usual normal virus okay where i mean we'll have a normal surveillance i don't like this usual normal vi <laughs> virus <laughs> because we we, we I, I don't think the world wants to still see this yeah so it's just like pandemic. another yes yeah i think um, i mean for instance during the covid heavy covid seasons mm -hmm. i don't think ghana recorded uh, cholera cases because right. we're washing our hands okay and now everybody has stopped I, I, I pray we don't have any outbreak but okay if ghana should have an outbreak of cholera that means we didn't learn anything from, from okay from from covid right great stuff so my phone line is active zero three zero two two one six five four one uh whatsapp is zero five five eleven eleven nine nine seven ultimate health on joy 99.7 fm so the uh the health ministry alongside i believe the ghana ports mm -hmm. and others have issued renewed mm -hmm. or reviewed uh covid 19 protocols which i believe kicked in on the 6th of january right um, what are your comments on these seth if, if there's anything I I think if any traveler wants to read the new um, 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 policy, that's the, right. the, the 18th one. Pre-arrival and the, arrival. They'll yeah. look at the cost. They said testing is free. Testing is free? Yes, that's what they said. In, in the, the new, new policy? Yeah, in the new policy. Okay. Testing is free. So um, to me, people should even avail themselves to get tested before they leave okay. the airport and, and just come home. Right. You know, which I think is good. Um, and also... At least putting the spotlight on people coming from China that okay. if you don't have 48, um, 48 hours. What does PCR, it mean? Coming straight from China or with a travel be, history? That with a travel, I think um, the policy said coming from China. Okay. Coming from China because they had the Let huge numbers. Let me just numbers. read this. Passengers mm. ori originating their journey from China, from China will be required to present a valid negative COVID-19 PCR test 48, 48 hours, hours prior to departure <laughs> from originating country. In addition, such passengers will be required to undergo mandatory COVID-19 testing on arrival mm -hmm. at the Kotoka International Airport at no cost. Yes. Right. W which is a good thing, you okay. know, because China recently had huge numbers as compared to UK and US. Okay. It is it is proper that we say, okay, let's test people from China mm -hmm. and, and make sure that we are not getting their 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 new variant in, okay. in our country and spread it because it has been it's been said that the new variant is highly contagious right. and can transmit faster. Okay. In addition to this, passengers will be randomly selected and offered uh after what I'm seeing and mm -hmm. offered, offered right so yeah. they, they can refuse. Uh, it depends on how they approach <laughs> it them. It Probably doesn't sound mandatory to because they are they are also screening. They okay. are doing thermal screening of temperatures. Okay. Maybe if your temperature is a bit high, they might uh, okay. explain that they need to All test. Right. Let me quickly take Bishop from Mampo. I believe he's on my line. Bishop, good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, not, uh, yes, Bishop. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, Afishapa Bishop. Go ahead quickly. Uh, I think come back here. Yeah. Uh, please, I want to find out. Uh, those of us who took the Johnson and Johnson, mm -hmm. that were, were the one shot, and we couldn't take the booster. What do? What is the lifespan of uh, the, the Johnson and Johnson? I heard some of them are six men, some four men. What about the Johnson and Johnson? How many men is the okay. uh, strength of the immunity? Okay, and let me let me put that to Dennis. Yeah. Yes, Dennis. So, uh, so Johnson is uh, just around, don't do more than the six months we are advising, though the data suggests that uh, amongst all,
Johnson actually had the longer period of uh, immunity. Right. However, in the US, mm -hmm. they were advising that uh, I'm on some platform that every two to three months, they are advising people yeah. to take a booster because that's a single shot. Okay. All right. So Bishop can, what, rest assured or he should take another shot? And then again, let me ask, if the Johnson & Johnson is not available, can a person take another vaccine? If you've taken, let's say, AstraZeneca, and now we're hearing booster and all that, can you crisscross? What's yeah, your, so, what's, what's so your advice? You can, you can crisscross, and I would advise that you use the same platform. So the Johnson is also Adeno, AstraZeneca is Adeno. So you are... You, you are okay to do that crossover Johnson AstraZeneca. Hang on, hang on, that Dennis. Hang on, hang, <laughs> Dennis, hang on, hang on. There will be no parts, please. Yeah. Steady. Oh, right? So, I ha I have, so, no, hang on. I have discerning <laughs> listeners, and we, we, we go with everybody. We leave nobody behind. I'm hearing Johnson & Johnson. Then you bring in Albino. Albino uh, okay. or uh, whatever. Please take your time to explain that so that we don't get any uh, uh, confusion. Thank you. Th th thank you very much. So, so if you look at the vaccines, yeah, the platform in producing them okay. as it became available for all of us. Okay, we are having a platform we call the mRNA. Okay. So, in the body, if you are producing any protein, mm -hmm. the DNA we talked about, yeah, the body will want to read them into certain codes. So the codes, as the body reads it, okay. will be producing the necessary things and adding the amino acids to make up the protein of interest for you. Right. And now with the advance in science, we were able to utilize that technique mm -hmm. and have the protein that you would need okay. to read and now produce antibodies against that part of the virus okay. was produced. That's the mRNA. Okay. So that is mRNA. Then once we inject, the body will take it up, read that code, produce the body, the protein of the virus in the body. Mm -hmm. Then now I will think that I have the virus. Then I will fight against it or I will produce immunity. Understood. Against it. Right. That is how we were very quick. Another way is that we have some viruses that are part of the body. So we can rather give them the viral uh, genes so that we introduce them into the body. Mm -hmm. Then once they break apart, the body can read the viral genes that have been made artificially. Okay. And now also produce the protein, which the body will produce immunity against them. Okay. And that virus is what we call the adenovirus. Okay. So what I'm saying is that Janssen, AstraZeneca are some of the uh, vaccines that were produced using that virus which is already part of the body the okay. adeno virus all right but so, moderna pfizer are of the mrna platform molecular platform that once it's given to you great. the body reads it and now produce the immunity okay so, so this this is not information that the typical vaccinated Ghanaian want to. <laughs> has but my question stemmed from what bishop asked and then i Which went is. further in terms of can we shop around or just take a vaccine that is available? You've talked about, let me call them the operating system of the mm -hmm. vaccines, mm -hmm. right? If they are similar, yeah. you, are, you are showing us you can crisscross uh, within the similar bands or platforms. But generally, yeah. a listener listening to us, wherever they are, uh, irrespective of the vaccine they've taken, the education we've given suggests that go back and get a booster, in quotes. Uh, does that booster have to be the same platform, same vaccine, same brand? That's what I want a concrete, conclusive answer to. Yes, yeah, so the, the first advice is that the vaccination card that was given to you uh -huh. is very important when you are going back for a booster. Okay. Two, if you go and they read and they get to know what had been given to you previously, mm -hmm. it may advise on the booster to be given to you. Okay. I've not seen a policy guideline in Ghana which tells of the crisscrossing okay. or remaining on the same platform. Right. But I believe... The health aspect, once they get hold of your card, knowing what you took previously can advise better. But some countries are quite explicit on the crossover and what you can take, what you can take right. together with what kind of vaccine. Okay. So essentially your vaccine card or your vaccination card, sorry, is a critical uh, yeah. tool 
-hmm. in this whole process. Mm -hmm. eh? So I'm hoping that you have thrown them away, right? If you have, you can call me so that I can, <laughs> uh, in quotes, insult you, right? But this is important information about yeah. you. It's important data for the country, mm -hmm. and there's a reason we captured it. So let's not throw that to the wind. Dr. Michael, also anything you want to add to that with regard to our new uh, entry policies? Um, so maybe just to add up to what uh, my colleague uh, Dennis mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, in a resource limited country, uh, most of the times you deal with what is available. So, uh, for instance, I took AstraZeneca, right. which is a, a, a vector based uh, vaccine, okay. uh, you know, of course, but I took I took Pfizer as my booster. Okay. And it is a mix on different platforms, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, I, I I have done. You haven't started you dancing buga, my, buga in your sleep. I've, no, I've even <laughs> done antibody tighter. And, right. And it's, it's, it's good. I mean, okay. The tighter level is good. So it is an evolving uh, study where right. you have this mixed vaccine uh, okay. approach where people are mixing vaccine to see what effect it will have. Okay. So far, uh, I know people who have taken different vaccines from different platforms. All right. it, it doesn't cause harm to you. Okay. I think the benefits far outweigh the risk. Okay. Right. Now, I'm seeing in the policy, the review, that uh, the testing is free, mm -hmm. right? Um, that is with regard to the entry at the airport. Um, this is for Ghana airports, so airports and air travel, right? Testing generally has been rather, uh, should I say, <laughs> expensive. Do you guys have any comments on this as a way forward policy wise? I know the reagents and all the procedures are uh, somewhat costly, but if we're looking at protection, should there be something we should look, be looking at in this direction? Uh, there are still facilities all over the place. They, they, they run the test, they give it to you, whether it is pak, 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 uh, six hours, 12 hours, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Any comments on the cost of tests or testing? Because and then also I do believe vaccination remains free in our country, yeah. right? But any costs, uh, any uh, comments on the cost of testing? Any of you can start. I mean, I guess okay. Know. Yeah, policy wise. So, so, so um, that po policy wise, I think that testing for COVID in any of our health facilities is free. But if it's about the review mm -hmm. of the airport testing, right? Then for sure, that one, um, previously, the cost was on the higher side. Okay. Uh, every Ghanaian had talked about it. If you compare it to other jurisdictions, mm -hmm. there was a lot more we could have done in reducing uh, the prices. Somewhere it came lower for ECOWAS uh, citizens, okay. but it still remained almost about $150 for people who were outside the ECOWAS region. Okay. We want to believe, now that the technique is way available, there are several uh, methods available, the regions are available, uh, we should be able to do anything uh, lower. I remember I did a costing around the season that we were paying almost $50 for even antigen test, right. where right. one have successfully done the Joy. test for just $10. Right. So uh, you, you wonder what really goes into some of these things. So it's something that could be reviewed. Of, it could be downward. reviewed uh, drastically. But then let's pay attention to also the guidelines that the airlines that are bringing people in yeah. have a responsibility Definitely. to ensure that passengers they bring into the country mm -hmm. are not going to be the source of our next wave or bigger uh, waves to cause problems for us. Okay. Let's ensure we respect the processes and the card, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. at least from recent travels I did, your vaccination card, I, I would say that is almost like your passport. It's a required if you don't document. have it, yeah. there are some countries you can't move across and you want to keep it so that you don't only run for vaccines and vaccination card when you have the opportunity or you need to do an important travel right outside the county yeah and at most places you're also required to upload your vaccination details uh, very online. Nice yeah okay but let me ask this question um we're hearing stuff that oh, the symptom presentation has changed can we quickly touch on this um Dr. Michael Osu, we are hearing stuff that suggests that now it goes straight to the lungs. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a running nose. You're not going to get a temperature and so on and so forth. Has the profile of the COVID-19 symptoms changed? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, before I respond to that, yeah. uh, I was trying to make some few comments on, on the guidelines. Okay. I, I think my colleague have spoken a lot about it. What the, I mean, it's good. It's good to be proactive and to try and put in measures to limit uh, these viruses from getting in. But but sometimes I think we also need to look at um, globally yeah. uh, um, whether uh, this decision may be maybe in a way too harsh uh, to the Chinese. I'm saying this because okay. we are taking these measures as a country and also for many Joy, countries, um, for those coming from China, whether they have vaccinated or not. Mm -hmm. But we also need to know that, I mean, in the U.S., for instance, way before the Chinese, uh, Chinese begin to record their cases, mm -hmm. it was, it, it's, it's known that 40% of their cases is being driven by the XBB 1.5. Right. And within the past, I um, mean, 28 days, close to about 1,000 people have died, and they have huge number of um, admissions. In the U.S., yeah. Mostly by this XBB, and in, in the U.K., and in Korea and in Japan, I mean, the XBB and the BQ1 are driving infections. So generally, if you really want to impose restrictions uh, to the point that if somebody has vaccinated, he need to show a negative test, then it would be fair to rather, I mean, open up for other people coming from other countries to go through the same same um, protocol. Right. Th this is some of the debate going on elsewhere, okay. whether the, so, it should be targeted at so Chinese. So why be so selective? and focused I mean, on china right exactly okay so these are these are these are things that i think we need to look at it on policy level to okay. see if we really want to target only china or want to open up uh, for, for other areas okay great stuff now the sy symptom uh description or profile right has it changed significantly should we be looking out for different things people are talking about aching joints and so on and so forth and less of the runny nose and the cough and stuff has the symptom profile for COVID-19 changed? No, no, no. I mean, not, not, not that I know of. You know, the, the COVID symptoms is, is wide. Right. Uh, wide, and sometimes it depends on people's physiological makeup. I mean, even when the alpha came in, certain people could not smell. Oh, yeah. They have a loss of sense of smell when they are infected. Others didn't right. have that. Okay. Others uh, had runny or diarrhea. Others didn't have diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So the same things we used to know haven't changed. Okay. Basically, fever, sore throat, cough, okay. uh, nasal congestion, uh, sometimes headache, uh, okay. uh, things that characterize this. But I mean, also because these new variants from the Omicron family, mm -hmm. these viruses are not viruses that are so aggressive to the point of dis destroying the, the lung cells in terms of the alveolar cell to shutting down your lungs, right. where you will require oxygen and you you need ventilation like it happened with the delta uh, because of the nature of the virus yes they can infect more but they can't drive to the to the lungs to cause a more infectious collapse. more infectious but what less severe less severe, devia, 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 <coughs> less severe disease so, this is this is what Om the omicron does yeah. right the challenge so, i have doc and uh, i hope we can address this quickly because we're reading a lot which suggests that this xbb Charlie, it has extra hooks. It's binding like this. It's going straight yeah. to the lungs. And therefore, we should take uh, a serious note of it. But listening to you guys, I'm getting a more relaxed understanding. Uh, are we me being misled? Or is it ses sensational reporting? Some of them are actually scientific uh, articles. Well, well, it depends on who is reporting right. these scientific articles. I mm. mean, if an ordinary person takes it, mm. and he may look at it in another way okay uh, so far if you look at if you want to study deeper deeper into this these we have what we call angiotensin converting enzymes too which is what attaches to, um, the virus attaches to okay so what the variants are doing is they have high affinity for these cells mm -hmm. unlike the alpha so they can infect more okay i mean if they have to if for instance beta can infect within uh, I mean, three hours, the Omicron can do that within seconds. Mm -hmm. This is the advantage it has. Okay. But if you look at the Delta, for instance, the, the mutations enables it to, to drive much deeper within uh, the, the lungs and attack the alveoli cells and, and cause it to collapse. Okay. Where these were the Indians were requiring so much oxygen. And for those that are infected in Ghana, they had to be on ventilation for some time. Right. So already there is, there is enough data to show that the new variant with the XBB or BQ1 and almost all the sub variants of Omicron are, are not so severe, especially for vaccinated populations. Okay. It wouldn't drive you to the point of, 
of, of, of being having severe disease and requiring right. oxygen. I like but that. for those who okay. are not vaccinated, they tend to have much much severer disease because they don't have any level of protection, and the elderly as well are mm-hmm. more susceptible and are likely to get sick. I mean, much severer than the other people. So, uh, what is available when you take a vaccine? Uh, you are able to, to I mean, withstand this to some level. You will be positive, all right. Okay. Not to the point of um, requiring ventilation and oxygen or being being hospitalized. And right. That is the good thing about 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 this. Yes, it's good to go for new vaccines, but you realize that these vaccines we've already taken, uh, being the Pfizer, the Moderna, have cross protection against the evolving variants coming in. Okay. So for for us, I think it's good news, which is why we are always advising that people should go in for the vaccines. Right. And and try and boost their systems and okay. withstand any kind of Since, kind of variants that, right. that may come. Since it is a Sunday, let me do the church translation. Basically, <laughs> what Doc has said is that the existing uh, vaccines we have are effective. Okay. Yes. yes irrespective <coughs> of uh, emerging variants and there's clinical evidence to prove that so no shaking yeah all right uh, elder abeku will do the, 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 the tree translation and then <laughs> somebody else will do it but basically that's what he's just said uh, i'll steal a few minutes just to tidy up on a few things before we wrap up and uh, we're already uh, over time but just quickly within the airports and for uh, air travel i'm seeing the re-emergence of the requirement for masks right uh, i see it in our our, our policy yeah. as well so within the airport you arrive you are traveling wherever you are in transit yeah, you wear it. your masks i just want quick clarification from each of you on this requirement vis-a-vis what we see on a daily basis everywhere we go we are having parties we're having functions we're having political rallies where some people are winning and some people are losing but uh, the mass chale uh <laughs> Dennis, you take, give me your take on that. Um, I'm, I'm taking it as scientifically driven mm-hmm. uh, policy measures, uh, but it's a bit confusing for the average person, right? You drive your child to school, there's somebody at the school gate with a temperature gun, etc. The kids are supposed to wear masks in class. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all very funny. Uh, what, what, what is this, this deal, uh, this reintroduction or the reemergence, especially for travel, and how does it relate to everyday protocols? Thank you very much. So very quickly uh, because we are over time. Yeah. I, I think as far as uh, policies are concerned in Ghana, the wearing of masks is relaxed a bit optional, except you are in enclosed areas. Okay. And uh, we will advise that is being adhered to. If it comes to the airport travels within the airport, most airports are enclosed. Though as wide as it may be, mm. you have several millions of people within the airport. Also on the aircraft, you have people in an enclosed area and it's quite advisable, not knowing where you are picking what from, that people actually protect themselves. This, in a way, it protects us and it makes it easier for us to keep our infection and rather not take others on board. So it would be good if we can adhere to it and then translate it in our working and dealings with people in enclosed areas right. at people that people are uh, at areas that people are clustered at their rallies and other things okay. it will be good that uh, we, we keep such clean measures okay. uh, to be able to protect ourselves and lastly let me end by saying that taking the vaccines and the booster doses is the way to go okay. let's avoid all the issues about vaccines and the vaccine hesitancies mm-hmm. it doesn't cause any impotency it doesn't diminish the population it's rather good for us to be protected against hospitalization, severe disease and death, okay. than to say that we want to stay and die from the pandemic, which at least vaccines have come to help us save it. Great stuff. You're hearing my resource person, and he's a man, Dr. Dennis <laughs> edu He says, hey, ask no impotence. <laughs> <laughs> it's a testimony from him, eh? right? No, no, I'm taking three doses and, and, you, are, and, I'm and so you, are, fine. you are fine. I'm still fine. Okay, it's an. I, I was going to use another <laughs> F word. Uh, you are firing, <laughs> but uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's all good, right? So we sorted out. Wear your mask if you can. Uh, it's advisable, but especially and particularly in enclosed spaces, we yeah. must be doing that, 
Right. Uh, were you going to add anything to that, sir? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just hoping to ask a question um, when FDA is going to probably approve an antibody testing okay. platform. So people take the vaccine, they can actually go to a lab and check whether they have antibodies. Okay. You know, we keep saying that... Antibody when you take testing. The, yes. Right. We keep saying that when you take the vaccine, you develop sure. immunity. It's not everyone that will be able to respond to this vaccine and produce antibodies. Okay. That could be a protective um, soldier for you. So right, maybe right. we are going there. We need we'll approval get for the testing. Yes. So at least people right. can test and know that they have antibodies. Okie dokie. Dr. Michael Ousu, last words from you. Um, I know you sit in the labs. If I, all three of you do, uh, are the samples coming in? Are we really testing like we were doing before? No. Uh, I, I feel from the discussion, one of the uh, yields that we would expect or one of the indicators is that we are still testing seriously as a country. Uh, whilst not, uh, should I say, predicting a serious wave. Uh, are the samples flowing? Are people testing like before? And that that have an impact on what we're discussing? Just quickly. Uh, no, I mean, no, no, not, like, not like before. Mm. I mean, so uh, initially when they travel, traveling out, I mean, it was a requirement for people to... I mean, test and show evidence of result. You had travelers coming in more for this, but mm -hmm. but you don't see that because a lot of the airports have relaxed measures. Even okay. for those who go through routine, I mean, surveillance where their samples are collected, this is not much okay. because I guess the, the the overall case numbers are low, so okay. you, don't, you don't do this. But so we don't need to do that. Of course. So it's important that you know there are there is a passive way where people walk in and do tests. Okay. But you also know as part of the national strategy, consciously, I mean, the country selects random testing of people coming in from the airport and also at the hospital facilities. Okay. So this is something you do deliberately, not because people are coming to do, but you do it in order to uh, be able to understand what is happening within the population. So okay. at this point where people are not doing it more, you have to enhance, uh, I mean, your strategies to the point of rather going in actively, right. picking people who have respiratory illness, checking as okay. part of the this influenza surveillance system and Understood. ensuring that you have up-to-date information to keep you give you the upper hand Understood. rather than waiting to be surprised all right by by by, by thing yeah. okay thank you very much dr michael Ousu. he's a virologist dr dennis a do JC is an immunologist, and uh, I have Seth with me who just wants me to say Seth Ajiman. <laughs> <laughs> he's a biomedical scientist. Uh, many so, thanks. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, just a quick one is that FDA has approved a neutralizing antibody test kit, but it's different from what at least uh, Seth mentioned. Okay. So I just thought I should put it out there. Okay. That if you are interested, they can. You want to know if the antibodies you have can neutralize the virus. Mm -hmm. In that case, that one, there is an approved kit okay, in the system. Okay, right. At this point, it is six minutes past the hour of three. I need to neutralize all of you. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you at the same time. Many thanks. It's always awesome to have you uh, inform and transform our listeners. Listeners, this has been our first show produced by Abe Kusan Kofi. We reviewed the current uh, global and local COVID-19 situation. Uh, the review... Uh, in terms of the state of the nation when it comes to COVID-19 is positive. Remain vigilant and uh, uh, look out for new information. But uh, the key thing, takeaway is, hey, get vaccinated, get a booster. Stick and stay okay. on Joy 99.7 FM. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Naughty Dua. I am out, Naughty by Nature. <laughs>